If you're looking to acquire a small business and that business that you're looking to acquire already has existing debt and you're wondering whether you might be able to assume that debt or take over the payments on that debt post acquisition, I'm going to walk you through the answer to that and, and kind of show you how that could work when it may or may not work depending on the situation. So a little bit of background first. My name is Adam Hooksum. I'm the co-founder of Projection Hub and we help clients create financial projections primarily for SBA loan applications and for investor pitches. And so what what I've got pulled up here today is our acquisition projection template. And I'm going to show you, kind of demonstrate in our template how assuming debt of an existing business might work uh, in an acquisition loan scenario. So what we have here is just the kind of the at a glance tab here. So after you have completed all of the projections, this is what you're going to get along with a five year income statement summary, cash flow summary and balance sheet, both annualized and broken down by month. But in order to look at the assumption of debt here, we're going to look at the input assumptions tab and what you'll notice here, what we have in the template is uh, loans prior to acquisition. So you can put in existing loans and you can select in this drop down box whether that loan is going to be paid off in the acquisition or not. Now, it is probably most common that any existing debt is going to be paid off in the acquisition. But sometimes clients will work with a lender, work with the existing lender to assume that debt. And so the way you're probably going to have to approach that is by essentially applying for a loan with that existing lender. They're going to treat you as uh, you know, a new borrower, even, even if you were currently a partner in the business, even if you're an employee of the business, even if you've been involved, they're going to treat it as a new loan. And so they're going to go through an underwriting process with you and try to determine whether you're credit worthy and able to, uh, able to maintain that loan post acquisition. So really, if you're utilizing our template here, and, and by the way, I'll put a link in the description of the video below to this template so you can grab it and use it for your own projections, but you're going to need to play around with this, this assumption here. So if we say, hey, this $150,000 loan is not paid off in the acquisition, then we are going to see that flow through to the balance sheet. Um, it'll remain on the balance sheet uh, based on that interest rate and the remaining term here of that loan. Now, you'll also probably have an acquisition loan and perhaps a seller note. So these are new loans down here that you would enter in. If you have a seller note or maybe a new SBA acquisition loan, you're going to put the principal amounts here and what amount of that loan is going to actually be used for the acquisition price as well as the terms. And all that kind of comes together to help you understand your debt service coverage ratio. So if we look at our at a glance tab here, we're going to see this key debt service coverage ratio right here. And typically the lender is going to be expecting a 1.25 debt service coverage ratio or higher. And so in this example, once I assume that loan, our debt service coverage ratio went to 1.23. So if I just come back here and say, nope, that's going to be paid off. Let's say we don't have that debt. And we take a look here, debt service coverage ratio is at 1.49. So again, not only are you going to need to make sure that the lender is comfortable with you, you know, personally taking on that debt and, and personally guaranteeing that, they're probably going to have to release the seller, the seller probably has a personal guarantee. They're going to release the seller. And so they got to get comfortable with, with you as the new owner. But then they're also going to need to make sure that the deal cash flows with the new debt that you're using for maybe the seller note and the acquisition loan, plus the debt that you're trying to assume or retain uh, post acquisition, you're still going to need to hit that 1.25 debt service coverage ratio, most likely. So I uh, hope that's been helpful. If you have questions about how to model out uh, debt service coverage ratio with uh, proposed uh, loan structures, seller notes, that sort of thing for an acquisition deal, feel free to reach out to us at support at projectionhub.com. We can help try to answer questions for you as you're going through that process. So I hope that's been helpful. Again, if you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to reach out. Thanks.